With modern cameras, we have the ability to take thousands of images all on one disk. But any editor will tell you that the photograph really is in the edit, not in the photographer. Edit out at least half, maybe 90% of the images that you already shot, add a bit of a crop to them, tighten them up a little bit, and you'll find that your slideshow looks much more professional. This was an assignment I had just a few days ago about some volunteers who pick fruit from neighborhood trees to donate to food banks. So I'm selecting the tagged ones. We're down to 22 images from the 160 that I'd originally shot. Now we can just quickly scroll through and you can see some similarities between them here. And now, of course, you can start seeing some of the crop marks I've already put on. Now you take a photograph like this. As you can see, there's a woman picking fruit in the tree. So you can see I've added a bit of a crop mark here. Now the question is, is it going to be a better picture if I keep it very wide, the entire photograph, or is it better if you just zero right into her face, or is it better to leave a little bit of space around it? I like a little bit of space around it like this. Other pictures like this, I think works better zoomed in a little bit tighter. So this is where the cropping comes into play. Something like this as well. You can see there's all this extra detail around the outside that we're just not interested in. To me, the important thing is the expression on his face and the cherries that he's picking, and leave just enough of the tree in there to be aware of the surroundings here. Some are, of course, more successful than others. Why would I show this picture when I can show this picture, for instance? It's much better. You can see his whole face. You see the cherries well. I think this photograph better illustrates what I'm trying to say here. When I go back to the final images that I've selected here, we'll take a look, and these are cropped, edited down for the initial bunch. Of course, you want to tell the whole story of the event that day. So I've selected an image here. It's a nice scene setter, or an establishing kind of photograph. A nice tight photograph, showing a detail the, of the picker up close. Here's a variable focus photograph that I thought worked well. It's all about the cherries after all, so there's a nice big cherry in the foreground, and I cropped it just enough to keep one of the pickers in the background here. Nice tight photograph of the cherries. It helps people remember why we're looking at these pictures in the first place. And again, here's that final picture. I was very careful in the cropping in this to select an image, first of all, where you can see the picker's face very well, and second of all, that you've got all that nice green leafy foliage so that you've got a chance to really understand the environment in which these people find themselves. Many times you receive photographs, I'm sure, from friends, colleagues, there's 200 pictures in there, and they're all very loose. It's very difficult to see what's going on. So if you get a few tight ones, nice and bright and focused, boy, people are really going to stand up and take notice. Now, here's me taking photographs of my son's rugby team playing on the weekend. The big thing people notice when looking at either professional's photographs or a very successful photograph is that they're nice and tight, like there's no extra detail. Now, if I quickly take a look at those and scroll through them, you can see the images here. Now, an image like this, you can tell, it's not a bad little picture. It's okay. It's, it's focused well. Everything works fine. But the image is really right in the very center. And that's not a question of whether or not you're a good photographer. It's just a question of how long a lens do you have. So this is where cropping can come into play. You can see that crop right in the middle here. And that's going to be much more dynamic. And you start going through, you can see exactly where the crop marks are that I've already put on there. I don't need a, a disembodied pair of legs off on one side. I don't need out-of-focus coaches on the other. The real action is right in the center where you've got the, the player being tackled. With any of these, you notice if the player on the outside is not adding to the overall, then don't put it in there. You can see an image like this. It may look very odd, but you watch. When it's all cropped and done properly, it actually looks pretty good. So with any of these, all that cropping comes into play in a big way. So now here we are with the final selection which has been cropped. And when you go through these, all of a sudden they look pretty pro. That's just because we've cropped out all that extra detail we didn't need and becomes very dynamic. Remember that picture with that really weird crop on it? When you crop it down like this, it, all of a sudden it makes some sense to you. It makes a world of difference. Our brains are remarkable photographers. They see an image and they can edit out all the extraneous detail that you don't want to be bothered with. The problem is, cameras aren't that smart. You need to be the editor on this one. So crop them down, edit them down, and you'll have much more success on your slideshows. For the Star.com, I'm Richard Lottens.